It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to talk about the book of Proverbs. Now, when I was reading the book of Proverbs, I noticed this particular translation note underneath the text. According to the American Bible translation for Proverbs 22, it says that the Egyptian instruction of Ananopotope was written around 1100 BC was discovered in 1923. Scholars immediately recognized it as a source for Proverbs 22, 17 through 23 to 11. The Egyptian work has 30 chapters. Its preference resembles Proverbs 22, 17 to 21. Its first abomination matched the first two in Proverbs 22, 22 to 25. There are many other resemblances as well, some of which are pointed out in the notes. The instructions aim to help a young person live a happy and prosperous life and avoid mistakes that cause difficulty. They make concrete and pragmatic suggestions rather than hold up abstract ideals. Pragmatic through they were, the instructions were religious, they assumed that the gods implanted an order in the world, which is found in both in nature and the human. Before we compare and contrast the two texts, let's first listen to the audio book for Proverbs 22. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord, I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause, and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Chapter 23 When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Chapter 2 says, Beware of stealing from a miserable man, and of raging against a cripple. Proverbs 22, verse 22 to 23, Do not rob the poor, because they are poor, nor crush the needy at the gates. Do not set your heart upon seeking riches, for there is no one who can ignore destiny and fortune. Do not set your thoughts on external matters, for every man there is this noted time. Do not access yourself to seek out excess, and your wealth will be prospered for you. If riches come to you by stuff, do not be spend the night with you. As soon as they, they will not break in your household, although their places can be seen, they are not there. When the earth opens its mouth, it luddles him and swallows him up, and it drowns him in the deep. They made it for himself a great hole which suits them, and they sunk themselves in the tomb, or they have made themselves wings like geese, and they fly up to the sky. Do not worry yourself out to gain wealth. Cease to be worried about it. 
When your glaze fits into it, it is gone, for it certainly it grows wings like the eagle that flies towards heaven. Give your years and hear what is said. Give your mind over to their interpretation. It is profitable to put them in your heart, but woe to him that neglects them. Let them rest in the shine of your insides, that they may act as a lock in your heart. Now when there comes a storm of words, they will be mooring posts on your tongue. The word of the wise, incite your heart and hear my words and let your mind attend to my teaching. For it will be well if you hold them within you, if they are already on your lips. Do not converse falsely with a man, for it is an abomination of God. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. There are six things that the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to him. Chapter 6. Do not displace the sawyer's maker of the boundary of the Arab land, nor alter the position of the measuring line. Do not be greedy for a plot of land, nor overturn the boundary of a whittle. Do not remove the ancient landmark, nor invade the fields of the fatherless. Chapter 23. Do not eat a meal in presence of a magistrate, nor set it to speaking first. If you are satisfied with false words, enjoy yourself with your spattle. Look at the cup in front of you. Even as a noble, it is important in its office, like the abundance of a well when it's drawn. Proverbs 23. When you sit down to dine with a ruler, mark well the one who is before you. Stick the knife in your gauntlet if you have a ravenous appetite. Do not desire his delicacies. It is food that deceives. Finally, chapter 30. Mark yourself these 30 chapters. They please, they instruct, they are the most foremost of all books, they teach the ignorance. If they were to read to an ignorant man, he will be purified through them. Proverbs 22 verse 20, Have I not written for you 20 sayings containing counsels and knowledge? So what do you guys think about these comparisons? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.